Come back. It's 28 minutes to 3 o'clock. Now, Zambia's elections have been marred by controversy and violence this week. President Edgar Lungu has ordered an increased army presence and now is accusing opposition parties of causing mayhem. Meanwhile, the battle continues between Lungu and opposition leader Hakainde Hichilema in one of the tightest presidential elections. Let's get some analysis now with Grant Masterson from the Electoral Institute for Sustainable Democracy in Africa, unpacking what's going on in Zambia. Uh, Grant, good afternoon. Welcome uh, to, to the Midday View. I see uh, latest reports, uh, some of the latest reports from Zambia saying observers who've been watching the election uh, now are very concerned that the President Edgar Lungu will then use this violent incident to justify a clampdown. I mean, there's supposed to be an election where people are, can choose freely and safely. They are new uh, leaders, government leaders, but they, there could be a clampdown. Yeah, I think that comes from two key, key moments that have occurred just in the last 24 hours, Dan. Um, the, the first is that the deployment of the army to the streets before the election is unprecedented in Zambian election history. The army has sometimes come on the streets to restore order after an election, but very rarely, uh, in fact, never have we ever seen the army on the streets before the election. And then the second incident was a very, very sad incident last night in northwestern province uh, where the chairperson of the Northwestern Patriotic Front, which is the ruling party, uh, and another member of the Patriotic Party in that province uh, were killed by a mob of people. Uh, and we don't know very many details about what, what caused that incident, but we do know that they were killed there. And so now the fear is very much that when you, when you look at the deployment of the army and the fact that the president has announced that he's going to be sending more troops to those provinces to stabilize things, then that's where the concern is coming from. So we could face a situation, which, situation where the president says in those areas where we've had the, those kinds of incidents, including the murders you're talking about, uh, they must not validate those elections, or those elections, they must be scrapped as invalid. Could we face that? Yeah, we could. In fact, last night in a statement, the president said that he now views the elections in three provinces, the northwestern, the western, and the southern province, as not free and fair. And that's a direct quote from the president in his statement last night, um, which, of course, we have to remind ourselves the elections were only held yesterday, and the Electoral Commission has not pronounced on any aspect of the elections thus far. So the president announcing in those three provinces that the elections cannot be free and fair is a very very, very serious deal. And of course, when you look at those three provinces, those are three provinces which are expected to go for the opposition candidate, Hakainde Hichilema of the UPND. So again, people are putting two and two together, and that's where the very real concerns are coming now. Yeah, and the vote counting is going to be challenged, I guess. And uh, we see internet has been restricted as well. So this might not lead to a good democratic outcome from where we were sitting now, or is that being too dramatic? Look, I think we still have a ways to go, and, and an election does have its moments of drama. Now, these are admittedly some serious moments of drama right now and very, very unfortunate incidences. But, you know, the real, the real shame about what's happened is that it's overshadowed what has been an astonishingly positive outcome, which is the huge turnout in Zambia. The, the, the turnout in this election, I've, been, I've had the privilege to come to observe elections in Zambia several times before, and I've never seen turnout like this. Young people, first-time voters, and the enthusiasm to be there for up to 14 hours. You know, Dan, it really reminds me very much of the, the, the spirit that we saw in 1994 in South Africa with those long queues of people who were just so enthusiastic to cast their ballots and have their voices heard. Uh, and really, that, that's the story I would love to have uh, right now uh, of these elections. But of course, right now, the drama is still to unfold. Uh, we really hope that all sides will show calm and restraint and that we will see these elections yield a positive result because the voters have spoken. They want to have a peaceful election. They want their vo voices to be heard uh, and the, the elections themselves to go ahead. So to stop the, the results to annul the results right now, whether it is from the PF side or any other party side, really, you know, we, we need to wait and see. But I think it's, it's a real shame what has happened in the last 24 hours. Yeah. And such a large voter turnout would lead to all kinds of speculation in terms of uh, polls and what people would expect. What was the latest that was expected in terms of polls, uh, people sort of predicting the outcome before what we saw yesterday, just ahead of that 
as people notice that there is a lot of voters who've come out in their numbers? Yeah, I mean, look, we always have to be careful about pre-election polls. Uh, we, we love to see these polls and to speculate on whether the polls are right or not. Um, so, so all of these uh, polls that were conducted before the election, we have to take them very, very carefully and, and, and make sure that we don't draw too many inferences because at the end of the day, the election result is what counts. But if you go by the, the early polls that we were seeing, then this was expected to be a very close election. And of course, we have to look back to 2016 and remind ourselves that in 2016, the elections were in fact very close as well. Only 130,000 votes separated President Edgar Lungu from Hichilema in those polls. The other thing, of course, is that neither candidate might get the 50% plus one vote that is required in Zambia's constitution since 2016 to become the outright president. So we may be going into a runoff situation if neither of the candidates can get more than that threshold, uh, which means that we come back and do this again in four weeks' time. Okay, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully there'll be less violence today and tomorrow peaceful and the voters exercising of their democratic right will be respected. Thank you very much. That's Grant Masterson. He's, of course, from ASA, which is the Electoral Institute for Sustainable Democracy in Africa. We'll be